this is a very, very important watershed here. It's just so crucial to all of our survival, all the way down this river. We've got to make people understand there's not any more land. This is it. Take care of it. Love it. My main goal is to make it better than it was when I got it. One of the last intact places at the landscape scale, 1.4 million acres, is here in the Southern Rockies, Southern Colorado and Northern New Mexico. The headwaters of the San Juan include three really important watersheds. It's the Blanco Basin, the Navajo, and the Little Navajo. The Navajo River runs right through Betty's Ranch. There's something right in the middle of that that kind of changes it up a bit, and that is called the San Juan Chama Project. It's a Bureau of Reclamation project that's actually taking water from the Navajo over into the Rio Grande watershed. The water that's being diverted at about 110,000 acre feet a year provides drinking water to a third of New Mexico which is pretty incredible when you think about the sheer impact that managing those headwaters landscapes are having to downstream users. And in fact, we have private landowners managing hundreds and thousands of acres to benefit water quality, water quantity for people in Albuquerque that they've never even met. Ranching has just been one of those natural things for me. My husband and I were the same age, in the same grade. I must have been 14 when I met him. We dated all through high school. When we graduated, we were married. And I was out here, been out here on this ranch ever since. It's my home. Worst thing was losing my husband, and then my daughter, and then my grandson, and it hurts, it still hurts, but that made me what I am today. I had to get up, hit the floor, get gone, and that's what I did. Being a woman out into a man's world, yes, that has been hard, but I can survive. I'm not a woman out of the kitchen. I've been out here all my life and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have always loved my cattle. And when my kids all grew up and left home, they're my comfort. They're my family now. I truly love them. I've always just been a part of the land. Whatever's out there, that's what I want. Love for the land, love for the animals, love for the flowers, the trees, and the Navajo River. This is where my church is. This is what is in me. The Navajo is a beautiful river, but it's had some, some very big impacts put on it. Um, one of the biggest is the Oso diversion. What happens with the diversion is that a lot of the sediment that comes down the stream, down the river, is deposited at the diversion. So it doesn't go, doesn't continue to move on downstream. And you might think, well, that doesn't sound like such a bad thing, it's taking the silt out of the river. But that's a vital part of the, of the function of the river. Rivers have two functions. One's to carry water, one's to carry sediment. It's just a real, important, important part of not only us ranchers, but the people who are depending on this for their drinking water all the way down this river. Really, it's our livelihood, um, being able to irrigate, grow grass, graze the grass, cut the hay. The hay's our winter feed for the cows to eat. It's just been deteriorating from this tunnel 
stopping the normal livelihood of a river, the gravel washing down, the rapids washing out the holes and all of that. Private lands are so important, they host a third of our threatened and endangered species. And if you think about it, private lands are often in the valley bottoms where you have abundance of wildlife and water. So from a conservation perspective, private lands are important to that conservation puzzle. I called NRCS to come out and take a look at the river. Jerry Archuleta said, we can fix this. He said, there's some other people down the river that want to do this too. And I said, oh gosh, let's all fix the river together. Many, if not all of the private landowners are very interested in doing projects on their land, but they don't often have the technical and financial resources that they need. So we brought together a variety of organizations along with the NRCS, Rocky Mountain Bird Observatory, Colorado Cattlemen's Agricultural Land Trust, and we started reaching out. The Navajo River Valley was a natural place for us to begin our efforts because of the leadership and vision of people like Betty Shaham. Betty really helped us with that and kind of started the charge. The work that we're doing on the Navajo is um, creating different habitat types within the stream channel where fish can, can get into and, and use as hiding cover or use for uh, a place to winter because we don't have hardly any of that in the stream right now. We're also providing a place for the small insects that are within the river, a place to live, a place to reproduce, and, and in turn those are the food source for the fish and a lot of different species within the river system. As a result, we're really seeing landowners all along that portion of the Navajo River come in and do the same thing. And what we hope to see next year and the year after is that further downstream we'll also see landowners doing riparian restoration so that you have an entire corridor of the Navajo River that's restored and better functioning from both an ecological standpoint and an economic standpoint. The ranchers are a critical, critical element of the future and, and that future being successful with them being able to manage their land properly and to keep it into um, larger tracts of land that it can provide those values that we like, you know, clean water, uh, open space, wildlife habitat. Without them being able to do that, and we start getting a lot of these ranches broken into smaller pieces, it's much harder to manage, and um, there's a lot more human impact in those areas. The rancher that owns the piece of land right now needs to be mindful of what's gonna to happen to the earth. They're not gonna tear up that cement. They're not gonna knock down those houses. They're forever there. The worst part of the changes I've seen here is the developments. I love this land, my kids love it, and there's so many memories here, and I just wanna keep it the way God made it. So it took me five years working hard. I got the conservation easement on it. Betty Shahan was one of the first people to put an easement on her property in the Navajo River Valley. And what that means is that that land and the water that comes from that land and the wildlife that benefit from that open space are all protected in perpetuity. You start looking at open space and habitat fragmentation and, and um, condition of our river systems, that development can have an impact on that. With some of the conservation easements, they're very vital in trying to balance that, that development pressure with maintaining open space. Putting a conservation easement on your land is a very bold thing for a landowner to do. Um, I know that Betty Shahan was one of the first, if not the first person in the Navajo River Valley to put an easement on her land, which to me speaks to her leadership, her vision, and her love of the land. When one person steps forward and protects the land in that way, others can see um, what happened as a result and often may choose to follow um, in suit. And I think Betty has really done that in the Navajo River Valley. The successes we have in Southern Colorado and Northern New Mexico 
is really a model for the West and also a refuge to come out and really enjoy a rural landscape that has protected its wildlife, its water quality, and its way of life. And I think it can really be a refuge for the nation. And as we grow in population, these types of refugees are critically important. These private landowners in our landscape and across the West are conserving, stewarding, and enhancing these private lands for the benefit of all of us. We've had people come here to this ranch and just want to oh, sit out on the deck and see the stars. Oh, how beautiful it is. I forgot what the stars look like out in the wide open and seeing the elk and hearing a bugle and seeing the colors change. You know, what a shame. They're not going to get any more. This is it. When I'm gone, I'm gone, and I can't do anything but what I wanted to do was to save this for them, and that's what I've done. This is our river. This river belongs to everybody that's connected to it. It's not mine. That's one of the things all of us have in common. And it's uh, very, very important to me to be satisfied with what I'm doing with what I have here to save for the existence of all of us. My kids, my um, neighbors south of the border, I mean, you know, it's my job and I love it. <laughs>